Hi everybody, it's Tom from Carmel, and I've had the experience in the last few weeks of losing a sailplane and having to replace it because it sailed right out of sight. It was there one second and gone the next. It just kind of blended in with the sky and it was in a thermal. It wasn't coming down how high it went. I have no idea, but it just disappeared never to be found. So I looked through some at some solutions for trying to track down one of these little birds and came across a spectrum telemetry GPS. And so this is the replacement Concendo. I've got, I'm not going to have the wings on it, but I want to show you how I've mounted this in the airplane and the kind of information it can give you and what you can do with it. So it's pretty easy to mount. All you do is cut a notch out back here. And this is as deep as you can make that notch. It doesn't quite fit all the way down. There is a carbon spar that runs down the length of this fuselage that you don't want to disturb. So I cut down to the spar and then I glued this in really well so that it actually is, becomes part of the fuselage. I had to buy a longer uh, cord for it. The one that comes with it isn't long enough to actually run from here to the receiver. So there it is wired in. Cut a little notch out of the fuselage right here so that uh, it would fit down in there. Through there, across the top of the servos, down here, and it plugs in to either one of these data points on this, or ports on this 637TA. And that is a 12 inch extension that's, it's actually kind of hard to find. When I went to look for one, the only place I could find one in the country was in Florida, so I ordered it. But at the moment, at least, uh, Horizon's out of stock and so was my local hobby shop. But I found a place down in, in Florida that was more than happy to send it to me and the shipping was actually more than the the cable. So, what can you do with this thing? Well, you put it in, and it takes a telemetry capable system to make it work. You've got to have a telemetry capable receiver, a telemetry capable transmitter, and I've got an NX8 sitting over here that I've got turned on, and I'll show you in a minute what kind of information you can get. So how would you make this work? Well, unfortunately, the, the NX-8 doesn't have graphics capabilities to actually map where the airplane is, but it almost you know, well, doesn't really need it, really. Uh, you can use it two ways. One, the GPS transmits its distance and direction from the launch point or the point where at least you uh, you plug the battery in and it acquires the GPS. It knows where it came from. It knows how far away it is and what direction. So if it's at 90 degrees at 1,000 feet, you look over to the east, 1,000 feet, and it also will report the altitude above the launch point. So you know about how high it is above the ground. So if it tells you it's at 200 feet, 1,000, uh, feet away and 90 degrees, it gives you a spot to look for it. If you've lost it in the, in the haze or uh, you know you looked away, you know how hard it can be to find these things when you look away from them and try to reacquire them in visually. So that's one thing you can do with it, is try to find it. And once you find it, you can use that distance and direction. So if it is, say, uh, a thousand feet away at 90 degrees and 200 feet. It also has heading. So you turn the airplane to 270 degrees and fly it back towards you. So you got to be able to do a little <clears throat> mental arithmetic if it's not in one of the cardinal directions. So if it's at 80 degrees, you're going to want to turn it to not 270, but 260. So you have to add or subtract 180 degrees to find the correct heading to fly it back towards you. And it also reports speed. 
So if it was lost, what you would do is turn it toward you, watch the altitude, uh, add, you know, put some power in, and the sailplanes uh, don't typically don't take a lot of power to fly on. And then you're going to watch the distance count down as it comes back towards you and continue to make corrections probably uh, almost always for wind. And keep that heading as the reciprocal of the direction that it's coming from. So if it's coming from, say, uh, 10 degrees out, 10 degrees uh, headed, or 10 degrees from due north, you're going to bring it back at 190 on the heading. Uh, as a full scale pilot, this seems fairly simple to me. I, f I fly, you know, all the time. I was, I've flown 12 hours this week already. <clears throat> and having all that experience working with GPS and compasses and everything, this is all second nature to me. But for some of you guys out there that maybe don't have full scale experience, uh, you might have a little more difficult time learning how to do this. Because I don't think too many people have put GPS's in, in, uh, in sailplanes or any other radio control models because they typically don't fly far enough away to get lost. But these sailplanes in particular are, are, can be difficult to see when you look at the size of this fuselage, particularly if it's coming at you or going away from you. It doesn't present a very big profile. And it would be easy to have one of these fly away, as I found out just a couple of weeks ago. And I think most sailplanes are, are that way, except maybe for the larger ones than this. But this one's small enough, it can be very easily lost. So let me show you what that uh, receiver transmits back to the transmitter in terms of, of position and how you might use it. So this is the the GPS readout on the NX-8. You get to it by from the home screen just with the roller bar. Go in here. Go to, there's the home page with the Concendo. Flip over to here. And what you see is speed in miles per hour including the minimum and the maximum for that flight the altitude in feet and depending on how you power it up you'll get either uh, altitude AGL above ground level or GPS altitude. The way you get the uh, AGL altitude is to power up the airplane first and let it acquire the GPS and the system will tell you GPS acquired. Then it knows how high it started out at and it will report AGL altitude. If you power up the transmitter first and then the airplane, then it's going to report GPS altitude. And I much prefer AGL for these kind of flights. Uh, doesn't tell me anything about how much terrain clearance I have if I'm looking at alt GPS altitude unless I know where I started. I have to do some math. Under that is heading. And if you're a full-scale pilot, you know there's a difference between heading and course. This, it, it's called heading here, but it can't really be heading because this uh, GPS receiver doesn't have a compass in it. So what it really is is ground track, which is actually better than, than heading if you have some wind. And then there's distance in feet and degrees. So you will have, say, 1,500 feet at 89 degrees. Uh, and if you've got the altitude AGL, <clears throat> then you're going to look over at that direction, assuming that you know where north is and you're oriented correctly. And you'll be uh, looking up above the horizon and the direct, correct distance and direction. And you should be able to find it, especially if you start turning the airplane. You should be able to see it if it's out there. But if you don't, your last and best option at that point is the latitude and longitude. So in, it will report at latitude and longitude uh, in degrees and decimal degrees. You can then put that into Google Maps or Apple Maps and it will sh the mapping system will show your position and the airplane's position. So then it's just a matter of finding a, a way to, to get there. 
hopefully by walking if it's not too far. And what I found by experimenting is that if the battery is ejected and the airplane crashes, the latitude and longitude are frozen at the point where it lost the signal. Everything else goes away. There's no speed, no heading, no distance, but you do have the latitude and longitude. So what you can do at that point is to take your phone, pull up Google Maps, put in that latitude and longitude, and you put it in as the numbers that you see, the latitude is going to be uh, followed by a space and an N for north, and the longitude, I'm going to put that in, follow it by a space and a W for west. And that will, in fact, give you the correct position. Uh, don't worry about time and sats is just how many satellites it's receiving typically somewhere between 12 and 16 i found for and it gives you an extremely accurate position so <clears throat> what i'm going to do next uh maybe a day or two before i get that done but i'm going to take this outfit out to the field just the fuselage with the battery in it in practice so i've got the airplane plugged in and over here on the GPS system, let's see if I can get over here in the shade a little bit. Okay, so GPS is turned on, speed zero, altitude 4.2 feet AGL, distance three feet. heading isn't picked up yet, and there's the current position. We're about three feet away right now. So that position is going to be where you're starting from. And the latitude and longitude is the actual position of the Distance aircraft. Zero feet. We've got 15 satellites. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to walk away uh, maybe a couple, maybe a hundred yards or so. I'm going to turn around here and take a look at the setting. This is an area of my neighborhood where there's a natural gas pipeline that I can actually fly over. And I'm going to go set the airplane down out there. It won't be seen, and I'm going to go see if I can find it. Of course, I'm cheating a little bit because I'll know where it is. But I'm going to set it up, and then I'm going to film the attempt to find it on Google Maps. I've got two cameras, a GoPro and my iPhone, so let's go set it up out there somewhere. I'm going to turn everything off. So GPS is out there. Zero miles per hour. Altitude zero feet is right where I left it, or started out. Distance and the last heading was 179. Feet. 123 feet away at 100 degrees with a latitude of 39.941. 973 and longitude of 86.27960. 16, 17 satellites. So, Distance next thing we're going to do is program that feet. Latin long into the uh, iPhone over here. So, there's the position that we've programmed in, and you can see on the map it's actually pretty close. So all i got to do is go walk and put the blue dot on top of the marker and it should take us there. So let's get started. So here we are right on top of the position I put in. Notice it's been translated into degrees, minutes, and tenths of minutes from the decimal and degrees that I put in. But anyway, there it is. Right where it was supposed to be. And it's in one piece, of course it didn't really crash either, it might be in several pieces. Now, while I'm out here, I've left the transmitter on sitting back there, I'm going to pull the battery out and run a little test and see if the battery is ejected, if the position is in fact preserved. I can get it off with one hand, well I can't. Just down. So, battery's out. There it is. Let's go check the 
transmitter and see if the position is still there. And there it is. That's exactly the position I put in. Even though the battery is out, the position of the airplane or the GPS, hopefully the GPS is still in the airplane, is still there even if the power fails. So I can, if I have a bad enough crash where the battery comes out, we can still go find the pieces, at least retrieve maybe a radio and some other useful parts. So here we are back at the studio down in my basement, which is a lot cooler than it was in that 90 degree weather out there in the field today. Here's my little concendo that we've been playing with. Just a few uh, footnotes at the end. Uh, one of the things that I've run into has been that the altitude will sometimes come up as mean sea level instead of AGO above ground level. When you start it up, no matter what sequence you use, I don't know, it seems to be just kind of random. But anyway, uh, the fix for that is to go to the telemetry page in the NX-8, go to the GPS, look up GPS, go down to <clears throat> altitude and toggle AGL, MSL back to AGL and that seems to reset the altitude to GPS, the GPS altitude to above ground level. Uh, and I really, really prefer that because I think when you're out flying, it's a lot easier to think about uh, is 200 feet means 200 feet or not 200 feet above the ground. When otherwise you got to memorize. Let's see, we started off at 850 feet, so I got to be 1,050 to be above all obstacles. So I think AGL for our purposes works a lot better. Um, the other thing that uh, I think needs mentioning is that it can be very difficult to mentally calculate a reciprocal heading to get the airplane coming back to you if there's wind or if the airplane is turning slowly uh, also the fact that the, the GPS co coordinates and heading and everything tends to lag a little bit behind there seems to be about maybe a half a second lag between what you're seeing on the screen and what the airplane is doing so you need to make your turns gradually and if you're trying to bring it back to you, not really horse it around up there because you wind up just going back and forth and just getting totally lost. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope uh, maybe someone out there who's lost an airplane sees a solution here and, uh, and goes out and can buy this equipment. And this is, again, this is the Spectrum Telemetry GPS receiver wired up to a telemetry capable receiver which is connected to a telemetry capable transmitter and I'm well aware there are other brands other than Spectrum but that's the only brand I've had much experience with since I got back into this hobby last year so best wishes to you all happy flying this summer thank you for listening